and there's brother Ahmed from Preston. So he is unity. <laughs> really, my thoughts towards Muslims was that it was predominantly an Asian religion and that was all I really saw of Islam. That was the only face of Islam that I got to see that it was predominantly Indian or Pakistani. I wasn't too I wasn't too taken aback by the attitude and the behaviour of some of the Indian and Pakistani Muslims that I see within my neighbourhood. They didn't really show a good side of Islam or a good sort of um, impression of Islam. So for me personally, I wasn't really influenced by some of the community that was around me. I saw them as friends, but just the same as me, local Christian boy, just doing what I'm doing, just like everybody else. But uh, that was my impression of Islam, that it was predominantly an Indian or Pakistani type of cultural type thing. Well, we kind of did in some regards because within my neighbourhood I, I felt that there was a sort of a, a link between the two communities, the black community and the Asian community because we're all in the same sort of area. So I used to go to school with a lot of the Asian community and I, I kind of got on with them as friends and stuff like that. But um, the religious side of it really didn't come, out, come alongside really a, a few, apart from Eid, when it was Eid they weren't at school. Um, they had, I think there was halal meat at the school for them as well, for that community as well. So, but I mean, a young boy growing up back in the day, I was kind of intrigued to know what Islam was about. But I felt that a lot of the Indian community, the Pakistani community, didn't really have an understanding of their own religion themselves. So, if it, for me personally, it was just me growing up, hanging out with the boys and just doing what everybody else is doing. But in terms of Islam, a lot of them couldn't really give me a true understanding of Islam because they didn't have it themselves. Um, I think really, I mean, from my friends really, when they used to, used to go and talk about what they used to, especially from Ramadan. Ramadan was like, you know, the fasting, but yet they used to be coming out and playing, you know, just normal games, just like we would do. And um, then they used to talk, right, I'm going to go to the mosque, I'm going to the madrasa, uh, or I'm fasting. Um, but I think my first influence of, of, of what Islam was about or when I was sort of introduced to Islam was around the times when they, they were going for Ramadan and they were fasting and they would tell me what they would be doing and things like that. And I think I became intrigued as to what they would be doing and um, I decided to ask questions. But like I said, I couldn't really get a proper answer from them. But I was kind of intrigued to know fasting all day and they'd be going off to play with me and then all of a sudden they're going off to mosque. What's that all about? Before Islam, I was a Methodist Christian and um, we used to go to the church um, every Sunday. I would say forced to go to the church, sit in this old-fashioned church and you used to play this organ like it was a, a Dracula horror film or something like that. But it, it was kind of freaky and most of the times I'd just spend my time singing the songs or forced to sing the songs and be looking at the, uh, the um, images on the windows and things like that really. But it, there was nothing there. It was a hollowness. Uh, everything about the whole church team just seemed hollow. I felt empty when I was in there and I didn't feel fulfilled spiritually within them. What made me more interested in Islam, I think there was a time in my life, I, I would say at a very young age, where I become sort of more conscious, if you will, and I started to search within myself. You know, I needed a belonging to something and I started to become more religious within my own church or find something that would sort of hook me, uh, sort of, get into my sort of spiritual, you know, spiritual side, if you will. Um, and I used to read the Bible regular, but the Bible was just rhetoric and it just wasn't fulfilling me. And especially I used to read the Bible and I used to come about the part where it used to say that Jesus was God's son. And I remember that part being a real sickle with me and I couldn't understand it. And um, as I became more uh, conscious around my own religion, I asked questions of my mum and my dad. But they didn't have to answer, they just told me you have to believe, stop questioning it, just get on with it kind of thing. And I think uh, uh, at that time when I was growing up, I met somebody who actually had quite a bit of knowledge of Islam. And he used to tell me how Jesus is in Islam. And, um, but when we talk about Jesus, it's in a proper light. So I was intrigued when he used to tell me how Jesus didn't die on the cross and he was taken up to the heavens. So he had quite a bit of knowledge, if you will, uh, at that age. Well, I would say I was about between... 12 and 13 and so I thought well okay maybe it's just for the fact that I was around a lot of Muslims that I might be getting influenced by their beliefs so I used to read the Christian Bible more and more but the more I read, in, read into it it just didn't sit right with me and um, within me 
I sort of felt a belonging to Islam, I sort of felt a warmth towards Islam and I was intrigued and I wanted to search more but I was also conscious of the fact that I was around an Asian community who were predominantly Muslim and so it's like I don't know if it was the fact that if it was the influence of them or if it was the real truth of what might be within the books so um, I started to go on a sort of a journey of Islam if you will and learn more about Islam when I look back in hindsight now, I would say that the uh, the yearning for Islam began at that point, but I had to I had to sort of check myself really and just check myself whether it was, like I said, because of the influence of the community or whether or not it was a real. So what I did is I I pushed it away from myself in terms of learning more about Islam. I didn't want to know anything about it, and I said, well, if this is real for me, it will come back to me. So what I did at that time is I started to go on with my life and started to do I you know I used to go out. A lot of my friends do what I used to do and not have any regard towards Islam and I said if this belonging is true then it will come back to me at some day or another and I think every time during my life I come across a situation where I would meet a Muslim and I would find myself sort of more intrigued to learn about Islam the more I pushed away the more I felt hunger if you will and a yearning for it and I started to read then at that point and I thought well, let me just read it and I thought I was starting to find out more about halal and foods and stuff like that. And I think I also made a conscious decision about that I will stop eating pork as well. I felt that even if I'm a Christian, I'm, I, that I shouldn't be eating pork as well. So I stopped eating pork at that time. So there was a change going on within, you know what I mean? And I can't really understand it, but at the same time, in trying to understand it, I went on with life and um, I found myself still yearning for Islam all the time. I remember asking God and then asking God, if Islam is real, then show me another perspective of Islam or from a different continent. Just show me something different which would, you know, make me look towards that nation, if you will, or a different perspective of Islam. And what happened is I went to work at Royal Mail and um, the large amount of Muslims were there, like I say, and I met a black Nigerian and I got on with this guy and he was a, he was a lovely guy. We got on so well and we got talking about, you know, he was very intelligent well into his politics as I was into politics and he was, you know, well into science and I was into science as well. And uh, what I found is later on, maybe a year after getting to know this guy, is that he was a Muslim from Nigeria. But the way he was in the way he integrated into society and still be a Muslim and still keep his values and still pray and his knowledge of Islam, I think it just softened my heart and it, it, it just melted my heart. And I think that there was just, at that point, I said in myself, I had to become a Muslim. It wasn't a question of, I think I'm, I'm, I want to learn more about Islam. I had to become a Muslim at that point because I felt that God had shown me a different perspective of Islam, which I wanted to see. And um, the fact that he, the way he had Islam and the way he integrated himself into the society that he was in and still be a Muslim, that suited me and that's who I was. And so really at that point, that's when I really wanted to become a Muslim. It was a, it was a burning passion. I can't explain the feeling. I said, listen, I want to become a Muslim now. I want to become a Muslim. And he goes to me, we'll go next week to London and we'll do it properly. I said, okay. And um, at that time, I, I, got a few, I got a bit of a doubt within me. And when I had this doubt, I started to ask myself a question. I said, am I a Christian? Am I a Muslim? Even though I want to become a Muslim, I don't believe I'm a Christian. And I remember talking to this Pakistani brother at the time, and he says, um, uh, at, my, at that time, my name was Gilmore, and he says to me, Gilmore, he goes, you know what? To me, you're like a Muslim. You've learned so much in terms of your own reading, your own research, you know, probably more than us. He goes, why don't you just take the shahada? And when you ask for forgiveness, you're asking Allah for forgiveness, not Jesus. So just take the shahada. And I thought about it, and that erased the doubt within me that I had at the time. So I said to the brother, this time, this week, I want to become a Muslim. Yeah, so I went to Regent's Park Mosque, and I met the Imam of the mosque at the time, and we sat down together, we had a drink, and he, he explained to me about what Islam is. He explained to me um, uh, all about Islam and the Shahada and what it you know, entails. Um, and he, and he says, you're sure you want to become Muslim? And I said, I definitely want to become a Muslim. And then at that point, he, he told me the words to say in Arabic. I repeated after him and then in English. And I just felt 
a release of the tension that I've been suffering all these years and I felt warmth within my heart. Um, it's not really hard because really at that time when I become a Muslim, it's hard to put into words that feeling when you become a Muslim. It's just a feeling that really is unimaginable. So I can't really do just this little feeling I felt. I, I prayed my first prayer, I went and I did the ghusl, I did the shower downstairs, and then I went to pray my first prayer. And I remember just crying in the mosque because when I looked before I went to pray, there was a person who was from Bosnia. I, I later found out he was from Bosnia. The person to my left was black. There was somebody in front who was white, and the leader of the prayer was an Egyptian. That there, right there for me, was, was Islam in a sense, in a nutshell. And that's what I'd been longing for, to see that diversity within Islam. And so I got the opportunity and Allah, by Allah's will, he allowed me the opportunity to see that. And so when I became a Muslim, my mum wasn't too happy about it. But I think she saw me being, well, okay, if you're a Muslim. But I don't think she realised how it made impact on her. And when I started to wear a lot of, at that time, traditional clothes um, of the culture at the time that I, I, was, um, I, I was with at that time, and um, me going to prayer quite regular, when she saw all of that, I think she felt, as though well to say, alienated, if you will. Um, but what I learned from the Nigerian Muslim was how to be within the society that you're in and still be a Muslim. You can dress the same as them and things like that. And so that made a change as well. And what my mum sooner or later learned, which was better, was that I was still more attentive to her needs in terms of helping her out around the house, going shopping for her, stuff like that. It was more than what it was before. I think at the beginning of the time, I think a lot of people when they come into Islam, they're looking for an Islamic ideal identity. When as such really there isn't. There is Islam and there's your identity that you bring to it. And this Islam is the most important thing that you have to carry through all the time within you. So, uh, and, 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 but you see culture at the same time, there's good and bad of every culture, as we all know. So basically, I am of Afro, Afro-Caribbean descent and I recognise how that might impact, impact on me socially and also politically as well but at the same time Islam is the one thing that I've got to come through first and foremost so I can't look to address things of an Afro-Caribbean society before Islam you understand it doesn't mean that I have to go to a carnival when it's time to pray first and foremost like I say anybody who comes into the deen they have to take Islam first that's the priority okay um, if you wish to carry some elements of your community or of your culture with you you can do so long as it doesn't transgress your deed and like, like i said i mean for example me i've got my locks right now but that's because my afro is a little bit uncontrollable but that's just a part of my culture which isn't haram but if it was haram i wouldn't be doing it and at the same time i've got to be aware of how that looks within my community as well within my community where i live is predominantly an asian community as well so i've not got to totally alienate myself from the muslim community as well take islam slowly and surely don't run before you can walk just take it slow each day at a time because when you became a muslim that's the biggest thing that you could do in this country and that really if you die with that and you die with iman that really, inshallah to Allah, could be the one thing that saves you. And on the path, no matter how slowly you learn it, it doesn't really matter because it's in the right direction. So don't go and try and run and jump and shout and do this and do that when really you haven't even got the basics. Stick to the basics, nice and easy, and inshallah you'll be there.